we are going to start talking about properties of exponents. Properties of exponents. Now, you do not need to have the names of these different properties memorized. You just need to know what to do when faced with the situation. Okay? So you don't have to say, oh, I'm using product of powers right now. Or, oh, I'm doing a power to a power. You don't have to do that. Okay? Um, you just have to know that when we're multiplying, you add the exponents. Okay. So here's our first one. Um, a product of powers. I have the answers down here. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. So we're going to start with a product of powers. Product of powers. Now, a couple of things that I want to point out is that this right here, this B, is your base. B is your base. The N and the M are your exponents. The base is raised to that exponent. The base is raised to that exponent. Now, um, when you do this, and you've got the same base, and you're multiplying those bases together, the rule is that you add the exponents. Now, I want to show you why. I want to show you why we add the exponents. Now, what does x squared mean? What does x squared mean? It, good, it means x times x. Now, what does x to the third mean? Good, good, okay? So I am multiplying x's together. How many times am I multiplying them together? Five times. x times x times x times x times x. And how can I write this right here? Using exponents. x to the fifth. x to the fifth, okay? So when we do this, what we've got is x to the two plus three, which is x to the fifth. So that is why we add those exponents. So our final answer here is x to the fifth. x to the fifth. Okay? Now, we can do the same thing with numbers, but it's only if your base is the same. If my bases are not the same, then I can't. What's my base in this next one right here? It's two. It's two. Okay, and they're the same. Now, if one was two and one was three, I couldn't do this. I can only do this because they are the same. So again, I'm going to have two to the three plus two, and that's two to the fifth. In general, twos and threes, you can go ahead and multiply out. Okay? It's not too crazy. Two to the fifth is smaller than you would think. Okay? What's two times two? Times two. Eight. Times two. Sixteen. Times two. Thirty-two. So two to the fifth is thirty-two. Okay? So my answer here is thirty-two. Now, I just want to show you one more thing. What is two to the third power? Two times two times two. What is two to the second power? Four. And what's eight times four? You got it. Okay, so there's multiple ways to figure it out when we're doing numbers, when we're doing numbers. But all the properties that work there also work when we've got, um, when, when we've got variables. So if we don't just have a variable and like an exponent, it's like two to the fifth, you want us to finish outside of here? Do you know, I'm going to count both right. I'm going to count two to the fifth right, and I'm going to count 32 right. Okay? Um, but just as a general rule of thumb, the twos and threes, you can go ahead and multiply out because they're just not too bad. Uh, but after that, I realize you don't have calculators and, you know, it's not, it's not something I expect you to do. Okay. This one is a power to a power rule. Okay. Power to a power. So what we have here is we have a base raised to a power inside parentheses, and then all of it is raised to another power, okay? And when we do that, we are going to multiply. Now, let's first talk about what that means. 
inside this parentheses, I have x to the fourth power. And how many times is that being multiplied times itself? Five. x to the fourth, x to the fourth, x to the fourth, x to the fourth. Okay? That's being multiplied times itself five times. Now, when they're being multiplied together like this, like I've got it written right now, what do I do with those exponents? Add them. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, plus four is what? 20. So this equals x to the 20th. You don't have to write it out like that. Your rule is multiply. Okay? So when you are raising a power, you are raising a power to a power. Okay? You've got a power raised to another power. That is when you multiply. Okay? Okay? So if I've got 2 to the 3rd, and I am raising 2 to the 3rd to the 2nd power, what would I have? Excellent. 2 to the 6th. Okay? Now, um, we also, so 2 to the 5th is 32. Any guesses what 2 to the 6th is? It's 64. Good. Now, let me show you something else just so your brain can kind of wrap your mind around this. What's 2 to the 3rd? 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, and then we have 8 squared. What's 8 squared? Uh, six, no, uh, 64. Yeah, 64. Okay, so just, I like to use some of those numbers just so you can kind of see why they work. Why they work. Okay, this property, power to a power, is used a lot with our following property. Okay, our following property is power of a product. Power of a product. So you don't have to know that you're using both of these at the same time, but I want you to, I just want to tell you that you are. Like you don't have to say, hey, I'm using power of a product and power to a power. You don't have to tell me that. But when you do this, you are using those two products, or those two properties. Here I've got power of a product. The N is on the outside of the parentheses, and the A and the B are being raised to that N power. I tell students to think about this similarly to how you think about the distributive property. That N that's on the outside belongs to the A and the B, okay? That N belongs to the A and the B. Now, this is not the distributive property, but, it, but you can think of it like the distributive property, okay? So I don't want you to get confused saying, oh, Alicia said this was the distributive property. This isn't the distributive property. But in our brain, that sometimes helps us to think about that. Now, the number one mistake that students make with this type of problem, the number one mistake is students forget to raise the number to the power on the outside of the parentheses, okay? That's the number one thing that students do. So let's look at this, 2x and all of it's being raised to the third power. That three belongs to the two and that three belongs to the x. A lot of students will say, oh, that 3 only belongs to the x, but that 3 belongs to both of them. The 3 belongs to both of them. Okay? So, this is 2 to the third power and x to the third power. 2 to the third power and x to the third power. Yes, and I was just about to do that. Two times two times two is eight. And again, twos and threes, we usually can go ahead and multiply those out. So my final answer, eight X to the third. I would accept either of these, but um, multiplying it out 
with the twos and the threes isn't too bad. Will web assign take you then? That is a fabulous question. <laughs> yes. Um, will you let me know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is a great question. Thank you for asking that question. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, quotient of powers. Um, a lot of times students don't, it, it, they can't remember real easily what the word quotient means. Um, this is division. We are dividing in this situation. So quotient of powers. Um, you don't have to have quotient memorized, but we usually remember that product is multiplication, sum is addition, difference is subtraction, um, and quotient is division. And so quotient, we don't always remember. Okay, so quotient of powers, we subtract. Quotient of powers, we subtract. Um, and so I want us to think about what this means. I have x to the fourth. That means x times x times x times x over x times x. Now, if it's in the top and the bottom, what can I do? Cancel it. Okay? I cancel it. So I've got 2 in the top and 2 in the bottom I can cancel. And I am left with x squared. But I can also get that by saying x to the fourth minus two x to the four minus two that is the easier way to do it when you are using your properties okay so our next one two we're going to go ahead and do two to the five minus two that's two to the third and we know what two to the third is what's two to the third eight Okay, now, just for fun, just for fun, two to the fifth, what's two to the fifth? It is 32. Two times two times two times two times two is 32. Two squared, 32 divided by four, eight. Okay, so I just want to show you why these things work with numbers. Now, now we're going to take these properties and we're going to put them all together. We're going to put all the properties together. So here we go. Okay. 3x squared times y times 4x to the third y squared. You always want to ask yourself, is there something that belongs to everything inside the parentheses? Is there an exponent outside either parentheses? Okay, and that's the power to a power rule. Okay, if you've got an exponent outside either of those parentheses, you have to do that first. Okay, you have to do that first. I don't have that here, but it's always a reasonable thing to look and check. It's a very good idea to look and check. Okay, now, the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply my numbers together. So I have 3 times 4. 3 times 4. That's what I'm doing first. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my x's together. Okay, x squared times x to the third. And the last thing I'm going to do is multiply my y's together. Now, there is an exponent that belongs to that y. There is an exponent that belongs to that y. Does anyone know what it is? It is 1. It is 1. So when I have an x value, when I have an x value, what do I tell you you can always put in front of it? A 1. Okay, so x and 1x are the same thing. The exponent works the same way. Okay, so x and x to the first are also the same way. Same thing. Okay? Okay, now we're going to simplify this. 3 times 4 is 12. x squared 
plus x to the third is x to the two plus three. Y to the first times y to the third, or I'm sorry, y to the first times y squared is one plus two. So 12, x to the fifth, y to the third. Okay, and that is my final answer. Okay, can we go to the next one? Okay. So, we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to start with my numbers. I've got a negative number here. So I'm going to say negative 5 times positive 7. Then I have a to the third times a squared. Then I have b to the fourth times b to the fifth. And I realize you might not write that, that step out. And that's fine. I realize that you might not write it out. And that's not a problem at all. Negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. Then I have a to the 3 plus 2, b to the 4 plus 5. So negative 35, a to the 5th, b to the ninth. It's not too bad. Are we doing okay? Doing okay? Okay, we're going to do a fraction now. So we're going to add a fraction to this. This one's not terrible, I promise. Yes, sir. Okay. Take pictures, no problem. Do the colors help? Do you guys like the colors? To keep... You can't see the colors? Okay. Oh, well. So can you read it? Yeah, I can read it. Does it, does it just look like black and white or? Okay. No, I look like color. Well, that's fine. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah, that's. Very fascinating. I worked with a guy that um, was colorblind in Denver. Yeah. Okay. This isn't too bad. We're multiplying. You don't have to have like um, denominators when you're multiplying. We're going to do this exactly the same way. I am going to take three fourths and I'm going to multiply it times one half. Then I have x times x to the fifth, y times y to the sixth. Now, I have an x by itself. What is that x raised to? Good. What's the y by itself raised to? Good. Now, three times one is three, four times two is eight. Okay, I do not need a common denominator when I'm multiplying. Then I have x to the one plus five, y to the one plus six. So three eighths, x to the sixth, y to the seventh. Okay. Yes, sir. What did you say the fraction was? Three eighths. Three eighths. I'm sorry. Three eighths. Yes, sir. Um, do you mind if, like, you, it's okay if we skip that step? Yes. Um, I know that I'm writing it out quite a bit, and it's to show you exactly what's happening. Um, but I do realize um, students likely will skip one or both of these. Um, I would encourage you to at least do this one initially, just until you get those rules down. I would encourage you to do it. Um, but I do realize that that's not, not something that you'll do. Okay, this is where we use two properties at once. Okay? You don't have to know that we're using two properties at once, but we are. Okay? We are using the power to a power property. 
So x squared and y to the third are being raised to the fourth power. x squared times y to the third is raised to the fourth power. Okay? So that is the power to a power. We're also using the power of a product property. Okay? Because I have to give this 4 to both of these. I've got to give the 4 to both, and I'm raising them to the fourth power. So, and you, you probably don't even realize that you're doing, it, doing two different things. What do I need to do with this 2 and this 4? What do I do? Multiply, because it's a power to a power. Okay? Then I'm doing y to the third times 4, because it's a power to a power. But I also had this power that I had to give everything inside. Now, I'm telling you, the thing that students forget is they forget to do it if it's got a number in there. If there's a number in there, that's what, what happens. Okay, so our final answer to this is x to the 8th and y to the 12th. Okay, and we're using two rules there, two, two properties, power of a power and power, power of a product and power to a power. Okay. Here's the next one. Three A to the fifth is being raised to the third power. This is when students forget about that number. You've got to raise that number to the third power. And that three has a one right there. So that is three to the one times three. Three to the one times three. Then we have A to the five times three. Okay, three to the third power is not terrible. What's three times three? Nine. Times three more, 27. Okay, so three to the third power is 27. And then I have A to the 15th. The next one has a negative. The next one has a negative in it. And we are raising a negative number to the fifth power. Okay? So we are raising a negative number to an odd power. This is going to help you double check things. Okay? So I've got negative 2 to the fifth power. That's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So I want you to look what happens. What's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4. Then I multiply that times another negative 2, and what do I get? and I multiply it times another negative 2, what do I get? Okay, and then my last negative 2 makes it what? Negative. Okay, so negative 2 to the fifth power is negative 32. When you raise a negative number to an odd power, it's always going to be negative. A negative number to an odd power is negative. Okay, if you raise a negative number to an even power, what do you get? Good. Just some little uh, side notes there that you might want to remember. Okay, you can certainly take a picture of that if you want to. Okay, there is a 1 right here with this x. So I have x to the 1 times 5. And then I have y to the 4 times 5. 
Okay, final answer, negative 32, x to the fifth, y to the twentieth. Take pictures if you need it. I'm, I've got to move to the next slide. Okay. Now we are going to use the quotient rule. Um, don't forget about your numbers. Don't forget about your numbers because you can simplify numbers here. In this situation, our numbers are not being raised to any power, but I can divide them. I have 24 divided by 3. 24 divided by 3. It is, it's eight, that's absolutely correct. Then I have x to the fifth over x squared. That is x to the five minus two, and our final answer is eight x to the third. Okay. Our next one has a negative number, so you do have to remember your properties of positive and negative numbers. So don't forget about your properties with positive and negative numbers. Okay? Okay. So here I am dividing negative 56 divided by 7 and x to the ninth divided by x to the fourth. Negative 56 divided by seven is negative eight. Then I have x to the nine minus four. So my final answer there is negative eight x to the fifth. Okay, our next one is very similar. I want you to take about 30 seconds and work that one out. What's 48 divided by negative 12? Excellent. Y to the seventh over Y to the first. Yes, it's Y to the sixth. Excellent. Okay. So what we have done here is we have used the exponent rules and we have been multiplying monomials together and we have been dividing monomials together. What that means is there's no addition or subtraction involved. Like we haven't done anything with addition and subtraction. We have had a monomial times a monomial or a monomial divided by a monomial. Okay, one term multiplied by another term. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna start multiplying things times trinomials and we're gonna start multiplying binomials times binomials. What I want you to do is I don't want you to forget these rules apply when we're multiplying and dividing exponents, okay? We don't add the exponents together when I'm adding 2x squared plus 3x squared because we're adding. So kind of help yourself distinguish the difference between multiplying binomials and trinomials or, or, and monomials when we're multiplying and dividing and when we're adding two monomials together. Okay, so we're gonna use these properties as we start to multiply. Now, this is the distributive property. 
this property right here is the distributed property. Um, and so what we have to do here is we have to give this 3x squared to everything. We have to give the 3x squared to everything inside that parentheses. And pay attention to your positives and your negatives. Pay attention to your positives and your negatives. Now, I would encourage you to write this stuff out the first couple of times you do it, okay? You don't have to, but I would encourage you to. So my first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 3x squared times 2x squared, okay? That's this right here, 2x or 3x squared times 2x squared. Then I'm gonna take the 3x squared and I'm gonna multiply it times my 5x. So I have 3x squared times 5x. Then I've got 3x squared times 3. Okay? The simple act of writing that out a few times is going to be very helpful for you. Very, very helpful. The other place that students make mistakes is they start thinking about how you know, we have like a, mon, a trinomial plus a trinomial, and we've got that addition or we've got subtraction right there. Students will start multiplying that. So pay attention, okay? Do you see how this 3x squared is bumped right up? That means multiplication. When they aren't bumped up together and you've got an addition or a subtraction sign, that's different than what we're doing right now. Okay, so don't start multiplying when you don't have to. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Okay, 3x squared times 5x, 15x to the third. So don't forget about that right there. Don't forget about that. Okay. Okay, now I've got three, whoops, what's three times three? And then I have nine X squared. Okay, now I can't combine anything else. I can't combine anything else here. Okay, because all of my exponents are different. You can only combine them if your variable and your exponent is the same. So I'm done. Always check to make sure you're done because when we start foiling, you've got a little bit further to go. But here, you're done. Okay. Now, this is a binomial times a binomial. And we're going to use a property here that you likely heard when you were in high school. You probably remember it from high school. Does anybody know what it is? Foil. Foil. Okay? And this is what foil means. First, outer, inner, and last. Okay? First, outer, inner, last. It's foil. From the F the O, the I, and the L. That's where we get it from. FOIL is a type of distributed property. You are distributing when you do FOIL. You are distributing when you do FOIL. Okay? So, we're going to get started. I have X times X. Okay? Then I have X times 5. Okay, that's, those are my outer terms. My inner terms are 2 times x. And my last are 2 times 5. Okay? 
x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Two times x is two x, and two times five is 10. Now, my final answer here, look at those two middle terms, and it's very, very common for you to be able to combine those. Can those be combined? Yes, it's very common. Don't assume you always can, because there are, there are times you can't. But I would say more often than not, you can combine those two terms. So my final answer here is x squared plus 7x plus 10. That's my final answer right there. Okay? Can we do the next one? We're going to use the same principle, first, outer, inner, and last, okay? 3x times 3x, whoops, 3x, I think I said 3x times 3x. It's 3x times 2x, those are my first terms. My outer, 3x times negative 1. Okay, my inner, 2 times 2x, and my last, 2 times negative 1. Okay, so I get 6x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 2. Is there anything that I can combine? Good. Negative 3x and positive 4x. Okay. One's positive, one's negative. What has the bigger absolute value? The positive, so my answer is going to be positive. It's positive 1. Excellent. 6x squared plus 1x minus 2. Do I have to write that 1 in front of the x? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Now, students confuse this one. Students confuse this one with power of product. Power of product only works when we are multiplying monomials together. We are not multiplying here. What are we doing inside that, that we're subtracting, okay? The wrong answer to this, this is the wrong answer. You do not do 3x squared minus 4y squared. That's wrong. 9x squared minus 16y squared is also wrong. You don't just give that squared to everything inside the parentheses. That only works when everything inside the parentheses is being multiplied or divided. It doesn't work here. Our binomials have to stay together as a unit. They have to stay together as a unit. So what this means is, 3x minus 4y times itself. 3x minus 4y times itself. Now what do we do with it? Foil. foil. We foil. Okay? So we have first 3x times 3x. Um, Outer, 3x minus 4y. Those are being multiplied together. Inner, 
negative 4y times 3x okay and last uh, negative 4y times negative 4y okay 3x times 3x is 9x squared 3x times negative 4y is negative 12xy, okay? Negative 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. y times x, does it matter which order I write it? No, it doesn't. Traditionally, you see it in alphabetical order, okay? It does not matter which way you write it as long as you're able to identify that the two, the blue and the orange, are like terms. Then we have um, positive 16y squared. Negative times a negative is a positive. Now, these can be combined. So I have 9x squared uh, minus... 24xy plus 16y squared. Now, uh, that is something called a perfect square trinomial. Um, even for factoring, that's not something I think you need to memorize. But that's what it's called. It's a perfect square trinomial. Um, the next one that we do is something that you're going to have to memorize for when we factor. Okay? You don't have to have it. You don't have to be able to identify it right now. But I want you to look closely at the answer to this next one, okay? I want you to foil this for me. 3a minus 2b times 3a plus 2b. So you are foiling this. So we're going to start with our first. 3a times 3a. Okay, 3a times 3a is 9a squared. Okay. Negative 2b, oh, I'm sorry, then I need to do the outer. 3a times 2b. That's plus 6AB. Now, for my um, inner, I've got negative 2B times positive 3A. That's negative 6AB. What did you notice when you did that? They are going to cancel each other out. They're opposite each other. So let's keep that in mind as we keep going. Then I've got negative 2b times positive 2b. Okay, whoops, I wrote that in the wrong place, my fault. Okay, it is negative 4b squared. Okay, and right here, these cancel out, and I'm left with 9a squared minus 4b squared. Now, anybody remember what it's called? Anybody remember what this is called? It's difference of perfect squares. Good, though. You were thinking about it. Difference of perfect squares. Correct. That's when you cancel them out. If they're both positive or whatever, you just add them together. Um, difference of perfect squares. Now, 
Um, when you look at 3a minus 2b, when you look at 3a minus 2b and 3a plus 2b, you don't have to look at that and say, oh, those are conjugates. That's what they're called, is conjugates. That's the difference of perfect squares. You don't have to be able to look at that and tell me that. However, next week when we do factoring, you are going to have to be able to look at 9a squared minus 4b squared and work backwards to get the factor. Okay? Questions? Any questions? Okay? Um, for anybody that wants some extra help, I'll be here at 11. Um, otherwise, I'll see you on Friday.